Ooh, that looks tasty. I've been called many things, but the one I prefer the most is Cold Track. Paladin Warrior. Yes, pull up a chair, I'll tell you where we've been. But first, I could use some mead. Mysterious there prefers wine. A little bit of cold berry juice for Melinda and a nice bowl of water for her little spark there. Yes. Ale. Lots of ale for a bowl. It all started a few nights ago when that good for nothing Mycath the eunuch gave us information about the missing alliance. Where we might find information. After sussing out as much info as we could from that useless waste where we headed off into the dungeons almost immediately upon entering. Bull was attacked by a spider like what we had never seen before. Quickly, she turned it in. Quickly, she relieved it of its insides. After a quick prayer to my god, to be armored in faith, I charged into the room next door, only to be followed by a fireball from Mysterious, burning everything in the room, myself included. At the same time, Melinda sent off Spark to slay his son. Bull was quickly attacked by a gargoyle of using her enchanted broadsword. She turned it into dust. Clay and dust it came, and hence it has been returned. Melinda, continuing another way, found a room completely filled with zombies quickly, and intelligently she retreated, sending Spark to slay one. Though she did take a few hits along the way, I prayed again, and was rewarded by opening a chest and finding a magic rod to open any hidden door. I then sought revenge against the zombies, slaying two immediately. Of course, trying to avenge their re-dead brothers they attacked. My faith protected me from all evil. Mysterious, using one of his favorite tricks, turned his blade to fire and turned zombies to ash. Just as things calmed, Bull barges into another room filled with goblins. Immediately she swings her blade and decapitates two. Just as one died, it called out to the other side of the room, revealing a small staircase. We can only assume down there the goblins king. And as if that was not strange enough, Melinda's old mentor suddenly wandered into the dungeon and she stopped to speak with him for a little for a while, sharing stories and information. Meanwhile, using the rod I just found, I opened a secret door and was immediately confronted by a hydra. As usual, my faith defended me. However, I could only see it was getting stronger the more heads that I chopped off. Luckily for me, for once, Mysterios did something intelligent with his blasted flame and singed the necks so nothing else would come out, and the Hydra fell. And then at last we found the first signs we were looking for. A stairway down to an arena. Down in that arena, Mitra of the Lost Alliance was being forced to fight for her life. I knew that we would have to send Bola. Bola is a great fighter, an incomparable warrior. More importantly, I knew I might be facing her ex in the very next room. That's a joke. Because I fought a minotaur. A minotaur. Part bull, part man. Get it? Rah! You know nothing about funny. In any event, as I stormed off to smite the minotaur, bull charged down the stairs, and before Mitra had a chance to defend herself, Oh, put her down with the flat of her blade. This allowed us to drag her out, and she will be joining us in her journey from now on to find the rest of her colleagues. Meanwhile, Melinda finished her conversation with her mentor, and again sent Spark out to do her dirty work, claiming the lives of more goblins. Mysterious, you want to know. He did nothing. Literally, nothing. That was the end of it. We were out of time, we knew we had to get out before daybreak. So we left, leaving behind the Goblin King. Perhaps one day we will be able to return and take care of him. Now, I've told you my story. Go refill our drinks, and if you see that miserable Mycath the eunuch, tell him to bring us more information. 
Welcome folks, Day the Hungry Gamer is back with another playthrough. And today we are continuing the cross-channel playthrough with Meet Me at the Table of Dungeon Alliance from Kixotic Games and designed by Andrew Parks. Now for those of you that were not fully aware, what this is, is this is a playthrough of the Lost Alliance Adventure Pack. So there are spoilers if you're not interested in that, though you can play through these adventure packs multiple times and have a different outcome. So it's not a huge spoiler, but it is some of a spoiler. If you did not see the setup video, then you can check that out. I recently crossed 1000 subscribers and I think that right now up in the corner of the screen should be a card that can take you to the setup video. We'll see if I'm able to do that right. If not, it is down in the description. Down in the description also, you'll find the link to get to the first video that Baron to Meet Me at the Table did, which got us through the first adventure. And then of course, the little audio log at the beginning of this video told the story of what happened during the first adventure as well. So I'm trying a new setup today and we're going to see if it works. Some of you may know that I recently got a new camera and I've been using that and that is what we have here. And I have it set up just enough space so I can build out the frame of the dungeon. I don't have the fancy Dungeon Alliance playmat like Barrett has, but it is just a three by three grid for single player. And I'm not worrying about the cardboard frames, which don't stay together very well. Over here for the solo cards and the drafting of tiles, this is the left one. This is the right one. I know that it's up and down, but that's how I'm going to be reading that. And then I also have off to the side, I have a second camera set up and we're going to see how that works out. And you should be able to see there how many cards are already drafted as well as what round it is. And then the quests and the solo card, as well as the cards that I have available to draft. And that looks like this. And so hopefully you're able to read all of those I think, I, I think we can, but again, I am experimenting a little bit with this. Hopefully it works out. Now let's talk about what it is that we have here. I'm not, again, I'm not going to go through the characters, but I will talk about the quests that we have set up right now. So first we have a rescue to Tanya, the queen of the Fae is caught in a magical trap. And so to get to that quest done, I'll have to unlock three secret doors and then cast three spells in the same room that Titania's in. Not overly hard, but it's kind of going to be determined by do I run across a bunch of secret rooms or not. Then we have the Trapper's Plans. The dungeon's traps are revealed. Now this one to me is very cool. Revealed three challenges from outside the room to place the plans in the dungeon. And then three times while adjacent to the plans, spend a whole bunch of speed, but you get to flip over another challenge and you do that three times and you get it. So I'm, I'm probably really going to try to get that, especially because there's already two challenges available. And then Castrum the Lich. Now I'm not going to lie. I'm probably not going to fight Castrum the Lich. I find the boss fights to be very, very hard, but we shall see if the zombies and death fairies come out. If they do, then maybe I'll go for it, but we're not using the final deeper dungeon room in this. So I only have four rounds. All right. So let's see if we cannot rescue some more of the Lost Alliance. Well, clearly the first thing I need to do is I need to set my, my board right there. That was a silly mistake as I got started. And I like the idea of leading with Coldrack. He kind of became the voice of the video log. So I'll lead with him and then put him out front. Or if I want to lead with him, maybe well, let's take a look at my cards here. So I have Evade, I have, ooh, I have Spark. Ooh, I have the pet. So if I have, a D, ooh, and, you know, I have two of Melinda's cards. So I'm gonna start with, I'm starting with her. So I think I'm gonna make a move and see what we can do with these bugbears and goblins here. So first I'm going to play Melinda's Animal Instincts. So I get two more speed and I get to draw two more cards and they're not useful for me. I have Fire Blast and Slash, so they don't help Melinda, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this out front because I have a lot of movement here. I'm going to go one, two, and then for three, 
I'm going to open this door here, and then four. I'm going to just step back one, I think is what I want to do. And I still have plenty more movement. But you know what? I'm going to turn this around the other way, and I will show you why. So I'll do that. And now what I'm going to do is one, two, three. I'm just going to shoot the goblin with my regular attack, which does two. The goblin has no defense. It can only take two damage. That gets rid of that problem and gets me my first XP. Then I'm going to, because I don't need a line of sight, I'm going to send Spark out, my little fox, and hit that bugbear there. You know, and I don't think I can use my a burst of strength on that attack. I don't think I can. If that's wrong, you can correct me in the uh, correct me in the comments. But end result is that does do two damage to the bugbear through its two defense. So not a bad first round there. And then let's go ahead and draft. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draft this story card. This rivalry. I'm going to go ahead and draft the story, story card, stuff is so interesting, and I only have one XP anyway. Is, and, and then we'll flip, flip out the new one. one which is the Helm, is the of, Helm Guidance. of Guidance. You come across the signs of a fervent battle. Two members of the Lost Alliance slew many foes here in an effort to outdo one another. Is your alliance also capable of, of such an intense rivalry? And so I get to check out two cards, number 10 and number 11. All right, number 10. As your alliance surveys the carnage, two of your teammates grin to one another. Can they outdo the Lost Alliance? So I can create an alliance by consulting card 11, create a rivalry by consulting card 11. Otherwise, discard the story card and return cards 10 and 11 to the deck. Oh, so discard. Well, let's, well, consulting means I can look at it. So let's take a look. Designate two of your heroes as the rivals and place one rivalry token on each of them. Erase the story card and 10. The rest of the campaign, you have the first rival to activate during a given round slays an enemy while standing within two spaces of the other one. Ooh, whoa, yes, that is absolutely happening. So we now definitely have a rivalry going here. So I think I think it should either be Bull and Coldrack or Melinda and Mysterios, just because of kind of their, their style and, and all of that. But I, I think I'm going to go with Bull and Cauldrack are going to be the rivals here. All right, so now we go into, now, now we, we go, go over, over here, here and we see what we have. We have this, this card, card here becomes discarded. discarded. And I'll just move that off to the side. And then this one, Fury, goes out of the game. And I'm just gonna put that on the bottom of this deck. There's no way I'm getting through the whole deck. And the two new ones we get are, ooh, Escaped Gladiator. And I, oh wow, those are both really good. And then we're gonna have that bugbear come and attack the closest human if it can get there. And it looks like it can and go one, two, three, four, because it wants to hit bull. And so the bugbear is hitting for three and then it gets to add a single attack die when it attacks. So the bugbear is hitting poor bull for four damage then plus one more from the card, so a total of five damage. And so Bull has a defense of one, and I do have an evade, so that means Bull is only gonna take two damage from that. That's not too bad, I'm not too worried about it. Well, so the good thing is here, if I can find a way to do four damage with either Bull or Coldrack, that will take out that bugbear and get me that rivalry bonus. Now Bull just already does four damage, so that's really all I need to do. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, and I didn't replace here. So we have a couple wargs that I have to deal with. I'll get those out in one second. So I think, I think I'm just gonna open the door to these wargs is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna set it actually this way because, or if I set it, yeah. I'm gonna set it this way and actually create that secret room up here. So I'll be able to maybe accomplish that one quest later. So I'm gonna use one to open the door. Then I'm going to use to movement to move right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play my slash here. So now my attacks are gonna do five, but I'm going to get to hit two different targets here. So I will be able to take out this bugbear first, which will gain me a campaign token, as well as 
two more experience. And so, and then if I'm lucky, I'll be able to take out that Warg, because the Warg has one dodge defense plus a combat die of defense. One, two. So it means it only takes three damage, but three damage is enough to take out this Warg also. So just like that, that is another two XP, and the rivalry is on. Then I get to draft, and I think... Oh gosh, what do I want to draft? I think I want to... Oh, I never switched my card to whatever the next one is. So I don't even know what's going to happen this round. That may have been a mistake. Nope, nope that's going to work out okay. And so I'm going to hold off on getting this because I am coming up with Mysterious Fortulence. I'm going, to, I'm going to pick up this Ice Spell. It's a really big hit. So I'm going to go ahead and spend two more XP and draft that. And I actually forgot to move this earlier, so I should be all the way up to there by now, which is great. And let's flip out the next one, which is a bash. So now I have six cards in my hand. I get to draw two more, and I'm kind of hoping to get Pyromaniac. Because if I get that, I'm going to be able to do a lot with Mysterious, but I didn't. But I do now have a bunch of cards that are Coldrack, so maybe I can do something there. But the bad guy is going, and it is coming right after Bull. So it'll move forward. I'll put it right there and it will attack, and it attacks for four damage. Now the only problem I'm having now is Bull is getting a little beat up, because I only have two defense, and I don't have another reaction to save myself, so that is going to be two more damage on Bull. Now I have to pay attention so I don't get her killed. Oh wait, no, she has three defense, so that's only one more damage. And then I'll flip up the next card. The only thing that's really of note is I will be losing this tile right here if I do not put it out. So here we have four lizard men, and that's actually kind of cool because I've actually never come across the lizard men before. So I do, I am a fan of that. That's pretty cool. Okay, so, but, so I have to do two things. I need to reveal this, and I need to open this next one. And the question is, how do I want to do that? If I go with Mysterios, he has a movement of four, and say, I'm going to activate Mysterios, I think. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the maneuver and give him plus three movement, which will let me open this door for one. So that's one right there. And now we have this ogre we have to deal with. Then I'm going to go two, three, and then max out all the movement that I need to flip this one over, and it's just a locked chest, so that's fantastic. And that gets us one step closer to getting our trapper's plans. Actually, I think I'll put him here, because then I have one, two, three. So if I put him there, I can open that door, and then I can attack this ogre who has six health, and he has two armor. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna hit him with a fire blast right here, and then I'm going to boost it with my flaming weapon and then bull's stamina. So I get to ignore all its armor and I do four damage straight away to it. Now that does mean that it's gonna be coming after me. It's probably gonna hit me hard, but I'm okay with that. And it's gonna be coming after Coldrack. So I probably made a mistake and should have done Coldrack first, but oh well, that is how it goes. And here's the new card, new tile there. So I didn't kill anything. I do have two XP left. And I think what I want to do... Gosh, do I want to draft another story card now? Oh, it's really tempting. So the boot to speed are tempting, and that Helm of Guidance is also really tempting. That's just extra damage there. I don't really care about the bash, and I can't even use it. I think I'm going to spend two and get that Helm of Guidance. I think so. That's going to be useful when I make attacks throughout the rest of the game. And then the new one that we get out is Adaptable. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to discard my Ice Spell, because I can't use it right now, and then draw four more cards. And hopefully I get something to help Coldrack defend himself a little bit. And I did, I did manage to get a Reflex, and you can kind of, hopefully that'll focus quickly enough and you can kind of see what I got there. So I think I think I'm doing okay, because now here comes the Ogre. The Ogre is going to move, oh, it can only move three. Uh-oh. So it's going to go one, two, three, 
and it is coming right at poor Melinda there. So poor Melinda is taking five damage right to the face. Now Melinda has a defense of two, and unfortunately I can only unfortunately I can only bump it up to a three. So that means she is going to take two, no, sorry, three damage because that is a plus one on that card. Ooh, okay, I need to start doing some healing here. This is, I thought I was doing really well, but maybe I'm not doing really well. Oh gosh, I'm not sure. That was mysterious. Okay, so what I need to happen here is I need Coldrack to take him out. Oh, and this, this one goes, I think this comes out afterwards, so this still stays out, I believe. All right, so now we just have Coldrack. So I need... I just need Coldrack to take out that ogre, and then that's really all I need it to, him to do, because the next card doesn't have any of them flipping back over, so I, unless I'm mistaken, ooh, the only problem though is if I don't get something new out there, two of my guys are gonna take poison damage right at the end of the round. Question is, do I wanna deal with that? Because that means immediately I'm gonna take two more damage. So to avoid that, I need to open another room. Maybe I should open the room to the lizard men. But Coldrack, gosh, he's so slow. He only has a movement of three. So I can only get Coldrack's movement up to a four, which is not good. Even with a boost. And that, I don't think that'll get me where I need to go. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Well, I could. Nope. But I still couldn't open the door. Okay, yeah. So I've kind of put myself in a bad spot. So I just have to make sure here that I kill this ogre here. And Coldrack, he hits for four. I, uh, so I just have to hit him. I don't even have to use any cards here. Yeah, so I am not happy with this. I'm going to go, I'm going to use for a burst of strength my eagle sight and my precision movement to get one extra move. So I can go one, two, three. Oh, no, that'll work if I do that. Yes. Then I have one more that I can use and I can open up this door right here. So I'll be dealing with these guys here, but they're not too horrible. And they're going to wind up hitting Coldrack with a plus two on their attack. So they're going to be hitting him for four, but I have a plan. So Coldrack has two. And so do a little bit of a retcon there. Before I move, I'm going to use this righteous prayer. Then I will do my burst of strength for the extra one movement. And so I can go one, two, three, use my burst of speed to open that door also. Then I will hit the ogre right here for four, which means to do two more, which is enough to take it out. And I don't even have to use any of my stuff. There we go. Now, now I'm starting to play a little smarter here. And that actually unlocks all the level two cards as well. Then into my round. Oh, but I didn't activate this thing. Oh, shoot. I messed that up. Oh, well. Well, there's nothing I could do with that. Well, oh, well, at least it's another locked chest. And I didn't blow that. So now I'm in a spot. Do I want to... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one XP now to just add another token there over on the Trapper's plans. So I should have already had to, and I just blew that. So I'm not going to draft, but that's what I'm going to do. And then I get to draw four more cards. There's all my cards I have are pretty good. I like them, and we're starting a new round, so I'll just draw four. And the good news for me is coming to this next round, not only did I get Mitra the Trickster, but I also got some healing, which I desperately, desperately need. Now, the end of the first round, this guy here, he wants to attack whoever's the lowest defense. And his, well, with his movement of four, now the lowest defense is Coldrack. So it'd be one, two, three. So he can't get to him. Excuse me, the lowest defense is Mysterious, not Coldrack, and he cannot get to Coldrack. So he will. Ooh, I didn't realize it had this Brotherhood ability. Oh, that's going to hurt really bad. But that's the way it goes. So it gets plus one attack for each Lizard Man within two spaces. See, I've never actually fought, fought these guys before. So plus three. So he's up to a five. And then the card gives him plus two more, so he is at a seven. And Coldrack has five defense. I don't believe I have a reaction. I do not. So Coldrack is going to take two damage. So that's a pretty bad beating I took there. But that will be the end of the first day. And so here we go. I'll take that up to day two. 
and I will reset everything. All right, so here we are set up. So I got a whole bunch of lizard men in there that I was not clever enough to deal with. I do have some healing. I think I can do a lot of damage with Coldrack, and I can certainly kill one of those lizard men. But I think the smart move is to start out with Mitra. I don't know. I don't know where Mitra is. I don't know. I guess she's just kind of lurking around, and every now and then she pops out and is like, "Oh, hey, here's an idea. Do this." So I will be able to use two treasures, two maneuvers. But more importantly, I wanted to do that so I could draw two cards on Coldrack here. Oh, now I get the reflex. Ooh, and a surge forward. So that's that's gonna let me open this chest also. Oh, sweet, okay. And it's gonna let Coldrack heal. So thanks for your tricks, Mitra. All right, so I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna use my surge forward. So Coldrack now has six movement. I'm gonna just spend two movement right away to open this thing up. Oh, I know it's a locked chest. I can either get one XP for it, or I can go digging. Oh, you know, mm, I'm gonna go digging. Ooh, ooh, the rod of opening. That is actually really good because opening secret doors is what is going to let me do that other quest. So that's actually really good. So that actually worked out, thankfully. Then I have four more movement and I'm gonna use two right away to heal myself for two. And then Coldrack only has, yeah, and Coldrack can just straight up kill the guy. So I don't even have to use any more cards. So I will, boom hit one of these lizard men and just take it out right away. And that's gonna get me one XP, just like that. And into the round, what do I wanna draft? Oh, uh, you know, and I probably should have just stepped over there to kind of block the door. It looks more heroic. And I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm go I know I'm going out of order a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and discard this smite card because there was no reason for me to do anything with it. And now I think I'm going to, and now what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and draft this over here. I want to know what this story card here is, and it's only gonna cost me one. So let us find out. And before we find out, let's see what our next thing is. And I forgot again, I was supposed to discard that last turn which meant one more of these should have been out. So Retribution should have been out there, which I can't use anyway. Now, I did unlock the level two cards. So, ooh, golden full plate, that's cool. I like that. Okay, ooh, escaped gladiator. So I'm kind of hoping here that we're gonna wind up getting another member of the Alliance there to kind of help us out. An enraged dwarf gladiator has escaped the Slayer's pits and now menaces your alliance. Will you accept the challenge? And I get cards seven, eight, and nine. Of course I accept the challenge. The gladiator will not let anyone hinder his quest for freedom. So I can consult the next card and place the gladiator token in a non-starting dungeon tile that contains one of your other heroes, which would be great over here. Also, Coldrack killed somebody on his activation, so that is another campaign token. I almost forgot to do that. If you defeat the gladiator, you get two campaign tokens and erase the story cards seven through nine. And I may consult card nine for a non-combat option. So I can either take this guy on, who, ooh, he's just a counterattack. Wow, that's tough. So that's gonna be, that's gonna, that's tough. That is definitely tough. Or seeing you pause, he shouts, show me the way out. One of your heroes in the same room as a gladiator may place the enemy token on his hero card. If the hero reaches the colored entrance space on your starting tile, you may remove the enemy token and gain two. Oh, well, heck. That's literally right here. So I, so this is what I think is going to happen. I think the cooler heads are going to prevail here. And because either way, I'm able to get two. And he, you know, the poor guy just wants to get out. So I think the answer here is Coldrack and Bull, probably Bull is all ready to fight, take him on. And then little Melinda here is like, uh, hold up. The door's right there. This way. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take that action, that option. And instead of being a murder hobo, I'm going to find a way to let the poor guy out. And I know I'm supposed to get the token, but it'll be just as fast if I just put the card right there. So I'm just gonna stick the cards right there so I know what it is that I'm actually trying to do as far as that goes. So that was Coldrack's turn. And so I am up, I'm doing pretty well here. Now, what I did fail to do was flip over the next one of these. And so I didn't zoom out, but this was the tile that I failed to put out there, which does have that. So that is a good thing. I'll have to try to make sure I get that. So I'm starting to think I'm not going to get to rescue Titania here, but I guess that's okay. In any event, what's going to happen now is the attack, which they want to attack an orc or magic. So 
Now, they're, I think, technically, I think the warg is stronger. I think. So I'm going to go with that. And so Mysterios finally gets to get in on the action. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, six to there. And it is attacking Mysterios for five damage. And I get rid of Retribution out of the game completely. That one goes away. And then the voice of authority simply gets discarded. And there are some very cool things that come out next. So five damage to Mysterios. So Mysterios has an armor or has a dodge of one. Oh my gosh. And I did not even finish drawing my cards back. Here. Boy, I am just doing a very poor job of keeping on track. I'm getting so excited by all these different things that are coming out. So Mysterios is getting hit for one damage, or excuse me, for four damage right now. And I will play is Eldritch Ward, so he's only taking one damage. So that's not too bad. What to do, what to do, what to do. So I think, I think I'm just going to, yeah, I don't, I don't love this plan because I'm leaving Kuljak kind of hanging him out to dry. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate Bull, who's gonna go one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna try to open that chest with my one extra movement point by just turning those two and I burst into a burst of strength. And this might be a mistake. I don't, because I might not be able to take out that warg there, but I think I'm going to be able to. So I got to roll the die here. One, it's only a level one. So I do manage to open this lock chest and you know what? It went well for us the first time. I'm digging in the deck of many treasures again. Come on. No. Ooh. ooh. Wand of Lightning. Play this card to inflict autom two automatic damage against any enemy that is two to three spaces away from you. Oh, well, that went really well. Then, so I know the Warg's going to get a bonus defensive die. The bull is doing four damage. And let's go crazy and make it five, six with the broadsword plus a die. So bull is hitting the Warg for eight damage. And I don't think... And so the warg has one dodge. I don't think it can do anything four, but I still do four damage to it, which still does take it out. And that gives me two more experience. So that went really, really well. Okay, so now we're back over here seeing what it is that we want. Now I'm going to lose, well, that I can lose, that doesn't matter. And Bull can use this. It costs four a slot, and I'm gonna lose this treasure here, which is, which seems like that treasure is really good. Plus one to no matter what attack and you reduce your damage. Yeah, I have to buy that. And I can because I have exactly four XP. Bring that one right into my hand. And we are going to lose. Oh, shield bash is good. We're going to lose it. Oh, well. All right. So I lose that shield bash out of the game completely and blinding speed, which I can't even use. So who cares? And I'll flip out the two new ones and we can see those later, but it is exciting because there is some story, a lot of story. And here we have somebody they're going to go after Melinda because she currently has the lowest defense along with Bull. But Melinda has five health and Bull, Bull has six, but I don't think I can get all the way to Bull. So we have one, two, three like that. And the good thing is, is it's going to reduce its attack because it's now further away from that thing. So it, has, it is attacking Melinda for three, for only three damage. So she should be able to dodge that one. So Melinda is getting hit for two and she has a defense of two and I will play the reflex card. And so she takes no damage from that lizard man. I think it's time now to activate Melinda. And first I'm going to move to here and let our good friend, the gladiator out. So I get two more campaign tokens. I'm up to four, which is good because I haven't completed a single quest. I'm not even really close to completing a quest yet. And then I will stop her move there. And then I'm just going to shoot this lizard man. Now Melinda has an attack of two. And if I use my brand new set of armor, it is now an attack of three, which is enough to take it out. And that will be it for her. Now we come back over here. We take a look. Now, unfortunately, so we got these two new story cards. I'm going to be losing this one. There's nothing I can do about it. In fact, the only thing I could buy is this right here. So I think I'm just going to do a discard. I'm going to discard it and we'll just see what comes out. Ooh, the iron golem. That's really cool. But again, I can't afford it. So that's it. I'm really saving up for that guy right there. I'm going to go ahead and discard 
So, well, you know, Melinda's hurt. So I'm going to go ahead and use these two cards as a burst of strength just to heal for one, which I should have done before. I know I'm going out of order. That's okay. And I get to draw four new cards. And really, I'm hoping to get a bunch of Mysterios's stuff so I can do get a big round here. And I didn't get everything I wanted, but I did get a Surge Forward and a Fire Blast. So that'll be good. All right. Now, these guys are coming right at whoever has the highest armor, which is Coldrack, who currently has two. Ooh, that's not good. And it's going to attack Coldrack for two plus one for the other Lizard Man and plus one more for the card. So four damage on Coldrack. And I have literally nothing I can do. So Coldrack just has to take two damage. Okay, and here we are to our last character of the round. And so I do want to get to this. So these Death Fairies, they're really... They really scare me. So I think, I think I need to wait. I think I just need to go and try and kill these guys here. Oh my gosh. And I have not been putting out the arches just like Barrent. I failed to put all these things out. So I guess the question is, how do I want to do this? Okay. I think I have a plan. It's maybe not a good plan, but I'm going to, so I'm going to start out. I'm going to give plus three movement to Mysterio. So he has movement of seven. I don't even think I needed to do that, but here we go. I'm going to go one two to here. Then I'm going to play Pyromaniac. So I'm going to get to do a second attack if at least one of them is a fire spell. Now I'm going to attack this guy over here with Fire Blast, which will he'll get plus one defense, so he'll still be okay. But I'm going to add the battle tactic to it, which I think you can add the tactic to a spell. If that's not right, let me know and I'll fix that in the next video. So I'll be doing four damage right off to this one right here, which will eliminate that. Then that will do one damage to this guy right here, who is also in the room. Now, I still have a two damage attack that I can do, and two damage, one will get through, and that will just take it out because I used Pyromaniac. So I just got myself two more XP like a boss. And the best thing about that is, well, I'll show you right now what the best thing about that is. So now I can draft and and I did forget last round to discard both of these guys. I'm just I'm doing a very bad job of keeping track of that. So there was also this ivory chalices out there and holy flames, which is really, really cool. Oh holy flames is great, but I can't get it, so that's fine. Anyhow, my whole plan was I wanted to get this one right here this innervated adventurer. So let's claim that right now and let's see what happens because I'm hoping that this is another one of the Lost Alliance and maybe we can save them. That would be really, 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 really cool. And let's flip out the other one, which is farsighted, which is totally useless. You behold a defeated member of the Lost Alliance strapped to a ritual table, suffering greatly. The hero's very soul is being siphoned into a baleful gem of power. Will you disrupt the strange proceeding? All right, we get... 33, 34, 35. This hero's essence is being drained by the Spider Queen. Select at random one of the ally cards from among those that still remain. This is who is being drained. Okay, so we have Tay, Vrock, and Shaktor. So I'm just going to roll my die here and I will re roll a zero. Two. So. We have Vrock the Hunter. So that is our friend who's being drained. And now I have a choice. I can either free him or I can devour his soul. Ooh, ooh, devouring souls is tempting. So this says consult card 34 if I wish to do the one and consult card 35 if I wish to do the other. So I have to choose before I look. I think. I think I should free him. I will f try to free him. Whoa. Freeing the hero's spirit will take a monumental effort to free him during one of my turns. I basically have to just waste the turn, discard eight cards, and do nothing else. Now, that's not too horrible because I'm only going to have, when I start up again, one thing I have to face. And let me just say, it would have been much easier if I devoured his soul. But So that's what I'm going to do. I am trying to free our poor friend, Vrock the Hunter. And that is the end of day two. I'm going to get this cleaned up. I assume round two, get this cleaned up and get ready for round three. There you have it, folks. That is the first part of the second adventure in 
our Dungeon Alliance cross-channel playthrough. I hope you've been enjoying it. Please leave me all the comments that you can about mistakes that I've made, other than when I was going out of order like a doofus, because I was certainly doing that. And we will get started in the next one. And I almost forgot, I do have to discard some cards and remove some cards from the game. I did forget to do that. But the Ivory Chalice here actually gets removed from the game. And unfortunately, our Iron Golem here gets discarded. And then I don't take any other penalties because there's nothing else out there. And the bottom of this card just says, if nothing else, refresh somebody and they get to attack really hard. So that'll work out well for me. I will record the next part of this in a couple of days once I've given everyone a little bit of a chance to kind of watch and see what's going on. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.